Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, I thank you very much for this opportunity. I know this is a, a very hectic uh, time period for all of you, and uh, sitting here listening to all this is, can be challenging, so I really do appreciate your time and listening. Uh, my name is James Flays. I'm the Geauga County Prosecuting Attorney, and I'm here today to testify in opposition to the amendment that has been offered regarding Section 1545.06 of the Revised Code. And uh, these proposed revisions to 1545.06 uh, that are in the amendment would make sweeping changes to the law relating to park districts and grant probate judges broad and unprecedented powers over Ohio citizens. Specifically, uh, the amendment would give the probate judge power to make people parties to cases and, and numerous other issues that are being litigated in a case right now involving Chester Township, and I know you heard from one of our trustees. A hallmark of our legal system is that cases and controversies are decided by a neutral party and a neutral judicial officer, and that parties bring controversies to the court and the court interprets the law and decides those issues. The proposed amendment turns that idea on its head. Under this amendment, the probate judge is empowered to investigate matters involving a park district. The probate court on his own motion can make virtually anyone a party to a proceeding in probate court and exercise jurisdiction over them. The probate court can impose duties and restrictions on anyone the judge deems fit who interferes with a park district's purposes. Finally, the probate court can issue orders compelling compliance with seemingly whatever the court deems appropriate under the broad language contained in this amendment. The amended language does not contemplate different parties bringing a dispute before the court to decide, but instead creates a process where if a judge decides that a citizen's interfering with a park district, then the probate judge could make the person interfering a party to the case, make them pay for investigation costs, impose duty and restrictions on them, and even throw them in jail if they fail to comply. The amendment creates a new statutory scheme within 1545 that is a stunning assault on an individual's constitutional rights. This new power that would be granted to the probate court to impose duties and restrictions upon any person or party that interferes with the park district's purposes is incredibly vague. Who would decide what is interference? Conveniently, the probate judge. What is interference? Is writing a letter to the editor constitute interference? What about a citizen's group that seeks dissolution of a park district, which is provided by statute? How about a board of township trustees that seeks to create a competing park district under the revised code? Under the proposed amendment, the probate judge would be given seemingly unfettered statutory authority to investigate matters involving a park district. This directly contravenes the Ohio Code of Judicial Conduct. The Ohio Supreme Court has stated it is not the role of the judiciary to conduct investigations, but that's what the legislature would be doing here, letting the judge decide what should be investigated, how it should be investigated, and directly conducting that investigation, either, it says, through hearing or through the appointment of a special commissioner. The Ohio Supreme Court has also warned about advocacy on the part of judges and that advocacy creates the appearance and perhaps the reality of partiality on the part of the judge. This in turn erodes public confidence in the fairness of the judiciary and undermines the faith in the judicial process that is a necessary component of a Republican democracy. And I think those words are very applicable here when you look at the unprecedented powers that this amendment would give the probate court. The potential implications of the statutory changes require careful scrutiny and vetting from probate judges, from the Ohio Supreme Court, we should hear from the Judicial Conference, from township trustees, the OTA, from the prosecuting attorneys associations. All, this, all these groups should have a chance to weigh, on, weigh in on this. It shouldn't be snuck into an amendment to the budget bill and run through with all these other funding issues that are very critical to our state, but funding the state has nothing to do with this language. This is an add-on that really addresses a specific ongoing case that's being litigated. Um, I've read the comments from the sponsor uh, that the proposed language merely codifies a decision from the Ohio Supreme Court last year. That's just not true. Um, this case merely held that a probate court did not, that our probate court did not patently and unambiguously lack jurisdiction in a specific controversy. 
The only court that I know of that has interpreted that Ohio Supreme Court decision is our own probate court. Uh, the, the Chief Justice appointed a visiting judge on this case after it went to the Ohio Supreme Court, and the visiting judge interpreted that decision, and I've attached that as an exhibit to my testimony, and I would encourage everyone to look at that because you can really see what can happen if this language becomes a reality. These issues are being actively litigated in the court. There's a pending case in the 11th District Court of Appeals. Why would the legislature seek to codify a decision of the Ohio Supreme Court in a case that's still being litigated? There are far-reaching ramifications here. This really needs to be vetted, I, and, and Representative Rogers made a good point about the um, Plain Dealer uh, article. One of the big problems with the, the way the statutory scheme is already is that probate judges can remove a park commissioner for anything. Look at Section A of, of this section. Probate judge, for no reason at all, on its own motion, can remove a park commissioner. This subjects park districts to micromanagement from the probate judge. It, even a county commissioner, if you appoint somebody to a county planning commission, they have to commit some sort of wrong to be removed. Not with a park district. The probate, court, probate judge can just remove you, which means if you're a park commissioner, you better do what the probate judge wants or you're out. And that is a it really undue influence that all the park districts in the state operate under. So I'm asking that this matter be removed from the budget bill and that if the legislature does want to consider all of the revised code sections relating to park districts, that there be a standalone bill and all the groups can weigh in on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Representative Scheer. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, appreciate your, your compelling testimony. Um, do you have any, any idea, any estimate of, uh, of maybe the time in, in your office or, or any other uh, county or township uh, or board offices? Uh, outside counsel, I guess, has been involved um, in this. Do you have any idea of the cost that's in, been uh, incurred so far in this issue? Well, up until a couple of years ago, we, my office didn't really spend any time on park districts. Um, but the, um, we've had a couple specific disputes, and I believe that Chester Township, we've been co-counseling with outside counsel, um, but I, I just don't have the staff to deal with, with all this litigation. Sure. Um, and I believe they've spent over $50,000. Um, if, if this passes, this will be like a bomb going off in our county. This will be challenged, and I, I would... I would estimate hundreds of thousands of dollars will be spent in legal fees by Chester Township and likely Russell Township and maybe others dealing with the fallout from this. Thank you. Representative Patterson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate uh, Mr. Prosecutor spending your time with us uh, this morning in Columbus. Your, your uh, testimony absolutely, Representative Shear is right, compelling. And it speaks volumes to me, and it ought to all of us, for you to make the journey from Geauga County on a day when you probably have overloaded docket and things to do, how serious this particular issue is. And I, I commend you for your, your time and your caring and your willingness to, to uphold the law, as we're all charged to do. My question is this. In the overall school, and, and, and your arguments are, are absolutely spot on, as I see it. The ramifications of this, and correct me if I'm wrong, will be felt throughout the state, not only at the park level, but could this not open the door for other similar patterns to be put into place with other uh, supervisory roles that a court may or may not have now? I mean, does this set a dangerous precedent in, in, a, in a macro way? I mean, that would be concerning. I mean, the common police judges appoint the Veterans Commission members. Um, you know, what if you made a similar change there? there? There's a lot of different areas that I I would wonder if this would survive a constitutional challenge. I, I just think that the the pain and the cost in, in ultimately winning a constitutional challenge um, would really be a burden that would be borne by Chester Township and other residents of our county. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Prosecutor, for being here today. Uh, just to kind of piggyback off what Representative Patterson said about you making the trip here, I would just point out that uh, it's also his son Zach's ninth birthday today. So 
who's also missing part of the birthday celebration. So happy birthday to Zach. Thank you for being here. Um, in that same Clean Dealer article that was referenced, um, it, it talked a little bit about some changes that could be made to this amendment. And some of the suggestions were that the word interference would be removed altogether. Uh, and that the amendment, there would be some language inserted in there that the amendment in no way would infringe on an individual's First Amendment rights. Um, and I'm just curious if you comment on it, if it satisfies um, the concerns, or if you still think that the, the end goal should be to pull this out of the budget altogether? I believe it should be, and thank you. Um, I, Thank you for taking me early, too, so I'll at least get to get them off the bus, so that'll be good. Um, but the, uh, I, I do think it should be pulled. It, you know, a lot of people are focusing on the interfering language, which is broad and ridiculous, but the investigation component of this is what alarms me the most. Um, it, you know, it, it, as an attorney and somebody who's dedicated my life to the law, the idea that a, that a judge would be conducting investigations is, is just mind-boggling to me. And, and that's, to me, the, what really jumps out at me. The interfering really is an opportunity for abuse, I think, because, you know, and, and making anybody a party. I mean, what, where else do we have that in the law, that the judge can just make anyone a party to a case that the judge deems fit? I mean, that's, it, it's really unprecedented. So... There's a lot of issues here, but the investigation component, and, and I think that if the if the court and the judicial conference and the Ohio Supreme Court really could weigh in on this and had time, I think that that would alarm them too. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Prosecutor. Um, the question I have is, is, how long have you been prosecutor in, in Jaga County, the prosecutor in Jaga County? Uh, this is my fifth year. I was just reelected. Okay. And um, were you an assistant prosecutor in Jaga County prior to being the prosecutor? No, I was a, a, a village councilman from a small village in our county and in, in, in private practice. Thank okay. you. Follow-up, Mr. Chairman? Proceed. Thank you. Um, so being an attorney in, in Jaga County, have, in, through probate judges in the past, probate Judge Henry and, and prior to Judge Henry, uh, being aware, have, have you experienced this type of a problem with the relationship between the probate judges and park uh, commissioners or in, the, in representing their districts in the past? No, the answer is no. I, it, you know, I think every county is so different because it all depends on the probate judge you have. I mean, uh, some probate judges appoint the park commissioners and then the park commissioners run the park. I think, and, and this isn't unique to our county, it, in other counties, I think the probate judge appoints the park commissioners and is actively involved in what's going on in the park. And I think that's to varying degrees of, you know, from management to micromanagement to completely hands off. So I think if you went around the state and you talked to different counties, you would hear probably 75 different answers to that question as to the relationship between the probate judge and the park commissioners. Which is why I think the plain dealer has a point that the probate judges should probably be out of the business of appointing the park commissioners. Okay, thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for your testimony. Thank you so much. Hope I you get home in time to get them off the bus. That's I will, for sure. Thank you very much.